so good to see you again. You know, this is the Art, and we're so glad that we can come to you, in Art in the House, and whoever else. Well, today we're going to use the uh, Dinker symbol, the adaptability one. It's a crocodile shape. Sometimes people think it's it's crocodile alligator, but sometimes people think it's a turtle. But um, and it has to do. To, it means the ability to adapt, adapt, which we all are doing right now. So today I want to show you how to take a piece of paper, a soft copy and a piece of firm paper, put them together, fold them, and make yourself your own reusable stencil like this. It's very firm and I can draw on anything and color the drawings and I can have my same piece I can use over and over. So a good way to cut this kind of thing is fold it right. Let me show you. Let me fold it in center. So finding center is the front of the crocodile's mouth and the end of the tail right here. And what I'm going to do is fold my piece of heavier paper directly in half. I'm going to crease it with my fingers and let me just show you. I'm going to place it right in here. I guess it would be probably cool to tape it. If you have tape, um, I don't see, yeah, here's some tape right here. Let me show you um, what I've got. This nice tape, colorful tape, but you can use any kind of scotch tape or glue. But I'm just going to hold that piece right there. You could tape it on the back as well, maybe, because you're going to only choose one side to get your shape. Now, what I want to do first, you've got these cool scissors right here, but there's, my fingers are really bigger than the holes. So I'm going to use these scissors because, and I'm going to cut around the black line. You can see that. And cut away the paper stencil just to get myself into this nice cool shape. I like the edges because they're so sharp. This feels like it's trying to dance <laughs> a little bit or it's happy, happy little shape. So um, I'm going to go all the way around here and um, get the edges right here. And I'm going to, now I'm going to, so just to show you what I've got, let you know it can open up and you'll see the shape on a heavy paper but something cool to know now let me just show you right here it's perfectly to the edge but if you flip it over here at the back it didn't quite match up but that is okay so you stick to the side where it's matching up and we're going to go all the way around the shape of this adaptable image I'm going to cut these three little fingers, one, or claws, or toes, depending on how you look at it. Now, one more cool thing to see is inside here, you got these nice lines. I want to make sure you know that if you fold this in half and kind of eyeball it somewhere in the center, because your black lines will not be on your new cutout stencil, it does not matter. Now check this out. I'm going to go in here and cut this shape. It has a little round spot. I'm going to cut right around the red edge like this and pull that piece out without ever using an X-Acto blade. You see that? And watch this. I'm going to go right here. And if I, I don't want to cut my arms off or legs off. I want to make sure you can open it up. So if I cut to the edges, fold this up right here like that and then cut it right there you know now when I unfold this thing watch what happens I'm so cool so glad I can share this with you because when I first figured this out but a young person we were so happy we could make our own stencils stencils and make these little adaptable you see how firm that is you got it cut out in the middle without an exacto blade and now you can put it on any kind of paper you want and you can trace it so it's going to be good and fit to go so I got these nice pastels and I'm going to round this whole shape inside out and I'm going to go all the way around with this bright color and what's cool about this these pastels like to smear 
and getting your clothes. And so you notice that I've got this brown paper on the table. So I'm using the old piece of paper. Sometimes you have old magazines, ads that come in the mail, you can lay them down or save a piece of cloth to put on the table. Now, what I want to do is kind of lift it up to see if I get the shape on here. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's yellow and I can see it, but maybe you can't. So what I want to do now is go ahead and begin to draw from the shape that I see. And I like this blue. The blue is going to pick up the yellow and maybe turn some of the green. And my plan is to color the top half with this blue color and color the bottom half with another color. So this, this blue green color then go around my adinkra symbol referring to being able to adapt, to adjust, to, tr to, to try to adapt to your surroundings or things that change really quick. Now if I fade some of these colors up and down like this with this light blue, I can come over here with another color like this yellow and bring it in and get those colors blending because these pastels like to blend. So I did the first top of it blue with yellow and I'm going to take some of this blue and pull it down so you get this kind of green blendy color and my pastel paper gets looser on here begins to disappear some this is kind of a mustard yellow but I like it I like it now I'm going to come down with this purple color and kind of see what happens take it in there some and do the bottom half with this color that's that's supposed to be a square but Sometimes you lose your shape. You can go back and give it some more. And I'm going to bring this down here. And I'm going to bring this in here and go around this yellow shape and make my adinkra symbol sharp. I like it. Now what I'm going to do is maybe blend some of this purple down here at the bottom like this. It's cool because these colors like to blend together. I'm going to come back with this nice blue here and mix it in with the purple again. Well, not again, but period. And look what happens. This purple turns into another color. Then I can come in here, mix it in with that other color. And I think it's making a nice tip so it's getting the edges sharp. Wow, those, I like these colors feel so relaxed and calm and I like the way I'm able to adapt to something new. These pastel colors are helping me think and reason. So what I'm going to do now, I got one more nice color, this nice dark blue. I'm going to take the dark blue and go around the whole thing and see what happens. Oh yeah, sharp. Uh, it's bringing the finish in there. See that? And if it if it goes over the color that's already there, it changes and blends. And the colors adapt into the change. And we are adapting to things that are changing. The colors are changing, the shape is changing. And let me go around here to the top. And everything changes. That's why we always must be able to adapt. What I'm gonna do is hold my paper so any pastel falls right there. And what's the thing that's cool about this, since you're a real artist, you can put your name. I'm gonna put my name, not yours. Do art. And this is how I sign my name. And it's 2020. So, <clears throat> and now we got our sign piece. And I can put to the side and put my colors back. And I got a fresh piece of paper to try another one and make a brand new one with different colors. And this is how I like to make myself think about adapting to new things.
So using the tracing paper, I was able to draw, trace Africa, but while drawing it, I decided to make it have a face on it. So I then take the graphite, after I trace it with a pencil, draw it out the way I want it, like this. I then take a pencil, close the book so I don't ruin my book, and take this pencil, which is graphite as well, rub it around all the lines. And now, what we can do, since you have your drawing on this side, you have your graphite on that side, you can put it on a piece of paper, and it might be good to tape it down, but you could just hold it like this. And if it works right, I'm gonna follow it around. So I've got the ear, the scarf, let me see if this eye's on there. So we're trying to get it to rub graphite from the bottom. Now sometimes it just goes in there real light, but you still got to use your skills to draw it. You get the same thing on another piece of paper. This is another way to trace and copy what you want. Now turn Africa to a woman who's singing some good songs. Right now her mouth is closed. The earring and a head wrap. I'm going to hold my finger and lift it up. Oh my goodness, it works. Well, I have never... This is really the first time I've actually done it, but I've seen a lot of other students do it. So now let me just show you. I got my finger here holding the paper, so my trace part is on here. And now I've got this copy, and I can come over here, and if I want eyelashes on her or up here, I can, put, I can just look at it again and make my earrings a little bit whatever. When I say whatever, make them look a little sharper. Because there I go, when I'm drawing and painting, I get excited and hyper. Now I can take this pencil and go around her again and draw it however I want. I can add more shapes on there. And this is, make the earrings. The earrings can have like little things coming down. And the eyes right here, the eyebrows right here. So it, I've got my tracing where I can use it again and I can draw this on a canvas or a board or anything different and go to painting. And that's a good way to transfer or trace and use the transfer method.